This is the plaintiff, Jay Contrastano. He says he and the defendant worked together, and that guy got sick at their company Christmas party and threw up all over him. His 100% wool suit was stained beyond repair. It was a disgusting mess. He wants to buy a new suit, which will cost him big bucks, and he's suing for the $1,135. He's now out. This is the defendant, Michael Brochu. He says he felt ill from the drinks at the party, and he ran into the bathroom, but didn't quite make it to a toilet, and he threw up on the plaintiff. The plaintiff told everyone at work what happened. It made him look stupid, and he had to be reassigned. Bottom line, the guy had the suit cleaned. It has no stains on it, and this was just an unfortunate accident, and he owes nothing. He's accused of losing it. All parties, please use your right hand. You see it, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn. Okay, Mr. Contrastano? Correct. The two of you work together, correct? Yes. What kind of business are you in? Uh, construction. I'm an electrician. Do you electrician. work for a, a construction firm? Yes. Both of you? Yes. All right, the same firm? Yes. And you've been working there how long? The better part of 20 years. And how about you? Six and a half. Okay. So, uh, company Christmas party. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> Drinking, revelry, inappropriate, whatever. All right, so what happens? You do a little drinking, do you? Yes, I do. Okay, uh, a lot of drinking that day. Enough. And enough to make you sick. Yes. It wasn't the quality of the drink that got you sick, it was the quantity of it, right? Yes. All right, that so what happened? food, too. I was just overstuffed, we'll say. Oh, it was a food? Yeah. It wasn't that you were wasted? No, I was drinking, too. Okay, so I'm, what happens? You actually, to your credit, you're trying to make it to the bathroom. Yes. And what happened? I started getting ill at the table, so I ran to the bathroom. And obviously, I didn't make it to the toilet. And what happened? I puked in the back of his suit. Of all the places in the bathroom you could puke, why did you end up puking on the back of his suit? I guess that's... It, just, it was like projectile. Like, there was no more holding it. it. I there was no it. more holding it. <laughs> I, <laughs> so it was... Do you actually remember this? Because that had to shock your system at that minute. So. Yeah, for the better part, I do remember it. But. So what did you do when... So you're just minding your own business, doing what people do in there? Yeah. And all of a sudden, someone comes in and bleh? Well, I saw him walking away from the open bar with his hand over his mouth like this and his cheeks puffed out like this. But I, I knew, thought you were in the bathroom when it happened. No, I was, I was in the bathroom ahead of him, but he was only about 10 steps behind me. I thought he was gonna go, keep going straight to go outside and lose it out there, but he didn't. He went into the bathroom about 10 steps behind me he tried to get into a couple of the stalls, which I believe were occupied. He turned around and came back. I don't know how you're not plastered against the wall, <laughs> trying not to be in the range of... Oh. So he ends up losing his cookies on the back of your jacket? Yes. Because this was a nice event. Everybody was all dressed up? Yes. All right, so he throws up on you, and what do you say or do? Well, I got out of the bathroom as quick as I could and took my jacket off and saw how bad it was. Of course, I was angry. But there was nothing I could do. I mean, it, even if I wanted to fight him, it wouldn't do anything. It wasn't going to well, clean my suit. Why, why would you fight him? Why would that be what you <laughs> pulled out yeah. of your grab bags of possible solutions? Yeah, I know. Well, it, people told me I should have done that. but Why? What would that solve? <laughs> exactly. That's silly. Exactly. You're a grown man. Right. Don't be silly. Go on. Right. But at that point, one of the waitresses came over and gave me a bag to put it in and said, take it home and get it cleaned, and we'll clean it. We'll pay for it. Who said that? The, the waitress. Why? That wasn't her fault. I don't know. but. All right, so what happens? Well, I couldn't get to the dry cleaners till Monday afternoon. So this happened Saturday night. So it sat in my car for two days. Ugh. There's nothing I could do about it. I don't know of any dry cleaner that's open 24 hours. Well, there are, but anyway, so go ahead. So you could take it there on Monday, and what happens? I took it there on Monday. I picked it up on Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it's on the ticket. Okay. And they showed me that they couldn't get all the stains out of it. Did you try somewhere else or just no. that one place? No, I right, thought. Can I see the jacket? Sure. And he wouldn't let me take it to the spot I wanted to take it to. Well, well first of all, when you sober up, what do you? What I, do you, I wouldn't apologize to him again at work. Were you I mortified? Offered, 
Oh yeah, I was, I was embarrassed. It's not like I purposely went and threw up on him. Okay, what are all these circles? Is that what somebody what has circled? I had, yeah, I had the dry cleaner circle what he saw. Well, all I get to see right now are a bunch of circles though. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. I couldn't, he showed me the suit. I can't see any stains either. What's good from here? Uh, you know, I guess what's bothering me is that I'm looking at something where someone has gone, you know, like, it's hard for me to see the actual deficit. So that unless, should brush right excuse off. Excuse me. Unless I'm looking at something that has, look, this is as clean as it gets. Instead, I have somebody drawing all over it. You say this brush is right off? Yes. I'll brush it all right off, will you? Okay. So now you, uh, well, you know, you had a very direct uh, hit on the back of his jacket. How much of your jacket was uh, puked on? I mean, it's just a, it was just a front, like there's lines coming down, puke. All right, were you able to get it out of yours? Everything came out. Let me see yours, and what dry cleaners did you take that to? Well, hourglass. Okay. And my suit doesn't cost anywhere near a thousand dollars. No, it doesn't, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not indicative of how much someone else's suit costs. I don't know, we're taking a look at that now. Just. I can see a big stain. Yeah. Show me where, I'll here. tell you what, why don't we do this? Can we bring the jacket yep. over here, sir? Could you come over here? Certainly. Go ahead. They are hard to see, I know they are, but there's one right in here. Where? It's darker there than it should be in this area here. Okay. I know the light has to be on it just the right way. There's one in here. There's one right here. I can see one here. Yeah, I can't see them. But I got to tell you, I do see, like, all of this is dark like that. That I don't know that that has anything to do with his projectile. <laughs> um, go ahead and go back. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Is the plaintiff entitled to a brand new suit? Uh, I'd go with he's not. Because? I mean, he was at the party, too. He was most likely probably drunk, so. Most likely probably. Um, okay, the suit's got a tiny bit of a stain on it. Doesn't matter, still deserves a new suit. Does deserve a new suit. He does deserve a new suit. Uh, new suit, no new suit? No new suit. But what about the stain? If you have a, a do, do you have to live with the stain knowing somebody grossly threw up on you? Uh, sorry, throwing up is a bodily function. Could have happened to anybody. He tried, got it clean. Stain God, I, didn't come out. I love you. You should be on Saturday Night Live. Getting, throwing up as a bodily function, going inside the courtroom. So now, let me ask you a question. How old is this suit? Um, the suit is approximately four years old. Do you have a receipt? I don't have a receipt. How am I gonna value it if I can't depreciate it from a known figure? I'm looking up the, the make, and I presume even this, this one maker has a variety of prices. Yeah, it's, depends on which suit, you know? Where did you buy it? I believe I bought it online. When, then you should be able to easily get me a receipt. Why don't, why don't I have a receipt if it was online? I couldn't find it. Okay. C could I ask one question, Your Yes. Honor? The uh, suit I have on is, is 18 years old, and this was an, eight, uh, an $800 suit also. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer to buy quality and not anything less than that because they last. Right, and I, I believe that. The, the problem is that used suits don't go for that. You understand? And when you are in court, what you're asking for is the value of the item at the time of the loss. That means it, it requires the court to engage in depreciation. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, for example, if I go to eBay now and someone's selling a Gianni Manzoni suit, would you like to see what they go for? Used? No. Not, no, not new. You don't get replacement value used. They go for very little. They go for 140, they go for, this one's going for 70. I don't know why that one's so cheap. This one's going for 49.95. You understand? So it's gonna be a lot less than what you're asking for. Right, but the point is I, I don't wear them that often. That's why this one lasted me 18 years. How do we know those are my stains that I caused? 
Please. <laughs> but it's true. He could, he could have stayed so Who is that lovely lady that you've brought with you to court? My grandmother. Oh, you must be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what are you suing for lost wages? Jeez. Are you two me? still working in the same place? I actually, I left because he was just harassing me the whole time. Harassing you how? Well, for one, he, gets, he brings a sheriff to work to come serve me with papers. He never asked for my address. He could have just sent them in the mail. But I believe know. he wanted to embarrass you at work. You're a bit much. Um, then, then he goes to the general contractor. I have a voicemail of my employer calling me saying that, that he won't stop calling the office. Why don't they fire him if he's being such a pain? Why? Why did You ended up leaving? Uh, yeah, I left to a different job site. Uh, but for the same employer? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, you didn't well, have to leave. There's a bunch your... of different job sites. Oh, they, so they just assigned you elsewhere. Yeah, a new so one. They... All right. All right. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Do you have proof of what the dry cleaning cost you? Yes. Can I have it? Sure. I would like to know how I'm harassing, how I harassed you. How did he harass you? I would like to know too. Well, he just wouldn't. He just would. Pretty much, I couldn't do my work because one, he told the whole job site. So now everyone, all the time. Everyone is, knows you puked. It was a Christmas party. Yeah, but what do you think that people don't know what you did? Well, no, it's not just our company there. There's everyone's there. But before I knew it, everyone knew. So now I can't even do my job because everyone's coming up to me every. And what? And laughing? Laughing, like just making stupid jokes, like I don't know. I just. Okay. It's the 2320? Yeah, I believe yeah. that's it, yes. Okay. Okay. I invite you uh, to go online and see what used suits go for. I'm going to uh, take into account that you seem to take very good care of your suits. Um, but I also have to take into account that I have zero idea how old this suit is because you haven't brought me a receipt. So this is the part, you already got your hand on the door. Oh, I'm, I know I'm, where you I'm are. I'm asking you questions still. <laughs> what are we doing, I gotta Douglas? Feel. Well, I feel a little rough justice. That is here. exactly right. I'm going to award you a very, apparently a very generous $150 on the um, jacket and an additional, in fact, that's just calling it the whole suit ruined, and an additional 2320 that you had to pay to get it fixed for a judgment in your favor in the amount of $173.20, not 1135 Good luck, folks. So, Mr. Brochure, you're going to have to end up paying him $173. Yes. The value of his suit. Uh, you okay? Uh, I'm okay. I just still don't feel like I owe him anything, but... Well, you... Well, I do now, so... Yeah, you it's, do. Come on, come on. And why'd you bring your grandma to, to court with you today? She, she wanted to come. I volunteered to be moral support. Okay. <laughs> Did she help? Yeah, she helped. Okay, good. All right. Well, that's the way it goes. Be careful next Christmas party, okay? Yeah. No <laughs> drinking. Very good. No drinking. All right. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Well, my goodness, you wanted $1,100. You're getting not even 200 Right. You know? Right. Not good. Not good at all. So what are you going to do? Can, what are you going to do with the suit? Can you still wear it? Will you still wear it? No, I'm not going to wear it. It's got stains all over the back of it. Why didn't you bring some receipts? Try it, at least. If I had the receipt, I surely would have brought it. But I could not find it anywhere. Really? The judge thinks you could have gotten it online. Would have helped. Anyway, right. okay. Good okay. luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Harvey? Okay, Doug, here's the deal. You're entitled to the depreciated value of the suit at the time of the loss. That's the law. It may not be fair. That's the law. This is the plaintiff, Carrie Miller. She says the defendant slashed her tires when she was parked near the Buddhist temple in her neighborhood, and he was arrested. The guy got her car mixed up with someone he had a beef with, but he refuses to pay her the $945.88 he owes her so she can get new tires. So she's suing him, here and now, for just that. This is the defendant, Tyler Wilson. He says he categorically denies slashing the plaintiff's tires, and he's not paying for something he didn't do. The defendant says he wouldn't do that to someone he doesn't know. The plaintiff has no concrete proof he did it, so he owes nothing. He's accused of slashing and dashing. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that the defendant slashed one of her tires in a fit of mistaken rage and won't own up and pay. But the defendant says the plaintiff has no proof and he's not paying for something he didn't do. 
It's the case of slashing and dashing. Have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Miller, you are suing Mr. Wilson for $945.88 for the replacement of four tires and lost wages. What happened? I woke up that morning and noticed I had a flat tire. When I went up to my tire, I noticed a one-inch gouge in my tire. It looks like somebody had slashed it. Uh, I noticed also that my neighbor had three slash tires on a company vehicle. Um, so at that point, uh, we talked together and we decided to call the police. Um, we pulled a camera that was next door and we saw what looked like Mr. Wilson coming down my driveway at around 9.30 that night. That's the only person that has come down that driveway. So I did press charges against him for it. Right. But did the police ever talk to him? Yes, they did go to his place of employment. And what did he say about slashing your tires? He denied slashing my tire. Uh, he admitted to slashing two out of three of the company vehicle's tires. He did not remember slashing that third tire or my tire. Okay, then. M Mr. Wilson. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, though? <laughs> what happened? Uh, I went to the residence where Mr. Miller lives uh, along with um, an uh, ex-co-worker of mine. And uh, you okay? Hold on one. Well, hold on. I hate to interrupt you at that very part, <laughs> but just one second. Do you live with his coworker? No. Are you we are neighbors in the same building? Same building. All right. So yes, you went, Mr. Wilson, to the building because a coworker of yours lived there. Correct. And why did you go to the building? Uh, to confront him. About what? Uh, we had, uh, basic, we had worked together for about two years and had a falling out a couple months before, uh, this incident. Okay. And someone had told me that he was at, uh, a local establishment talking about me. Saying what about you? I wouldn't remember what exactly what it, this was, this came Oh, it was enough for you from, to go over there and slash his tires. So I'm, ima I'm trying to imagine what he could have said that would have made you go commit a crime. After we stopped working together, we, it was just like a complete, like, you know, co-worker who could work together to hate each other. What had he said that propelled you to go to his house? He was, he was talking. As in? in? In the words of the third party. Right. No, no, not specifically. Oh, that, you that, didn't that, even that, have to know specifically. That was enough for you just to not, hear yes. that. Correct. Okay, so you go over there Correct. to confront him, and how do you confront him? I didn't confront him. Oh, what'd you do? He uh, apparently was, was not there, or I slashed the tires of the company vehicle that he used, that he That seemed like use. a reasonable thing for you to do. Uh, no, it was not. So why did you do it? Uh, anger. Were you drunk? Were you stoned? Or were you just angry and unable to control yourself? I had been drinking. I had been drinking and let my anger get to me. So you slashed how many of your co-workers' tires? I recalled two. But you were but drunk. was told that there were three. Yeah, well, apparently... There were four. Yes, I had been drinking. Yeah, but no, but apparently there were four because yes, her apparently. tire was slashed. Did you slash yes. her tire? Not as in my recollection. Can we trust your recollection? I have my own doubts. But it seems unlikely to me that I, you know, would slash a vehicle, a, a vehicle's tires that I don't know who it, the vehicle belongs to. No, that would be totally out of beyond, character right. for you. <laughs> that would be totally out of character, You, because you only slash totally. the tires of people you know. You know, you're, So what do you think happened to her tire that was, by the way, your car was parked where in proximity to your neighbor's car that also got slashed, Ms. Miller? Two cars over. Okay, so, and uh, do, the, do the trucks look similar or something, or do you? Not at all. Are, His it, was a truck and I have an SUV. Okay, are they the and same his color? States the oh, his has no, the company name all. on it. You have no idea. Yes, ma'am. So what do you suppose, yes. Mr. Wilson, that there was another knife-wielding maniac, drunk, uh, slashing tires a few feet from her when you were doing it? Because it wasn't you. 
I couldn't speculate. Oh, but I, I, I don't. I, I'm not going to speculate either. Speculate. I'm going to decide. I can remember what I did. Right. Why and... are you suing for four tires when he slashed one, Ms. Miller? Well, ma'am, uh, in my police report, it states that I needed to get four tires because of the tread of the tire. I drive an SUV, and you can replace just one. Um, you had to replace all four. During that, um, it also ruined my all-wheel drive on my vehicle. How so would that ruin no your all-wheel drive? Um, it started to overheat, and the lights came on on my vehicle. Wait, I don't understand. How are you dri- wait, 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 stop. How are you driving mm-hmm. on the slash tire? One of his co-workers came to my building and put my spare on for me. Okay, and then so you- So when I drove my spare to the shop, it started to overheat, and I couldn't yeah, drive Yeah, slashing it. a tire doesn't make your car overheat. I don't know how long you were driving on that on the donut, but no, that doesn't. Uh, how long were you driving on the donut, darling? Uh, the shop is about 10 miles from my house. I went to a dealership. Do you have evidence of uh, how much the tires cost? Yes, I have it right here. I have the total bill. How old were the tires that you had on there? The vehicle is one year old. It was just one years old. So if it's one year so old, weren't... why would, how mm-hmm. much tread could you have wasted on the other three tires? Because it's only a year okay. old. Uh, I understand if the car's four or five years old and your, car, your, your tires are four or five years old and then, you know, you, they have a, you know, they have a certain wear, then you have a new one, you can't do that, I get that. But just every time somebody gets a flat tire, they don't replace four tires when the car is a couple months old, you know, 12 months, you know, a year old. Um, right. So I'm wondering why all four tires were changed. Because of the tread difference. They had to put a brand new tire on. Right, and I know. And because my car was a used vehicle, they had to replace all four with brand new tires, which left me with the difference of the tread difference. I had to pay $30 each tire for them to put those on. So 120 Yes, ma'am. Did you pay anything besides 120 Yes, ma'am. I paid a $500 deductible to my insurance company because, as I stated, the all-wheel drive was replaced as well. My total bill came to $3,080.34 for this damage. But I have to figure out how much of that this imbecile is in charge Mm -hmm. of. What year was your car? 2014. Oh, I thought it was a one-year-old car. I'm sorry. Now, regarding that electrical problem that happened, the mechanical problem you said... Yes, ma'am. When I put the donut on the vehicle to take it to the dealership, uh, my all-wheel drive light had started to going on, had started to go on, saying it was overheating to stop the vehicle. Because you've got to drive. You know how fast you are allowed to drive with a donut? Thirty-five miles per hour is what and I so believe. So you you the drove ten is. miles, thirty-five miles per hour. Thirty-five was the most. So I went thirty. That's as most as I went. I did not go on a highway or any faster than that. Because that's kind of, I mean, what happened is kind of indicative of maybe not going 35 miles an hour. Either way, I don't think you can pin that on him. You can, however, pin all four tires. Now, uh, your lost wages, tell me about that. Do you have any proof of that? Ma'am, I just did not have a vehicle to get to work because it would not let me drive it. I no, wanted do you to use the donut proof? to get to work. No, I- you, you didn't want to use the donut to get to work. How about public transportation or getting a ride or something else? At that point, I didn't have any options. I did not have Okay. Uh, do, you, uh, do you have Uber. any proof today that you're out $144? Like, do you have proof from, do you have anything from your employment that would show me that you work and that that's what you make and that you, di- you, that you called in that day and then you didn't make it? Do you, like, do you have proof of the lost wages? No, ma'am, I don't have a statement from okay. that day. Uh, Mr. Wilson, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, have you ever been arrested? Yes. Uh, well, you were arrested for slashing your co-workers or your ex-co-workers' tires. Then you were arrested actually for slashing her tires, correct? No, this is one criminal case. But you're charged with slashing hers too, right? Yes, specifically I'm in charge with criminal mischief. Yeah, are these charges pending Cor- yes. against you? Yes, they are. All right, what do you expect is going to happen when you go to court? I'm not sure. <laughs> have you ever been in court before for a criminal case? Yes. How many times have you been arrested? Uh, a handful. I don't know what that means. That's not a number that I'm familiar with. I would have to look to see exactly how many times. You've lost track? How about you give me an estimate? Four, five. Mm. Like for what? Uh, DUI. Um, uh, Larceny. A breach of peace. And I believe that would be it. Okay. So some you, of those, uh, so some of those are from when I was, you know, younger. Well, how 18. old are you? How old are you? Thirty-eight. When do you suppose you will get your life together? 
Uh, it has been improving. Besides, you know, situations like this, it was this was not the right thing to do and the right way to handle. Oh, you think? Uh, is there anybody who depends on you? Do you have children or, or a mate or anybody who depends on you or parents who depend on you? Anybody? Is there anybody in the world depending no, on you? No, I'm by myself. I'm by myself. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wilson, it's time for you to get your life together. You're not an 18-year-old boy. This is nonsense. Complete nonsense. I'm ruling against you in the amount of the tires, $801.88. I'm not going to grant lost wages because there are other ways to get to work and you have no proof of the amount of wages you've lost. I am going to, of course, whenever you win, you win court costs as well, whatever you paid to file the case. That's my verdict. And Mr. Wilson, um, you know, you're, you're also, this is completely separate from the criminal charges that you're facing for doing what you did. And... Uh, you know, I, I, my, 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 like I, on the tip of my tongue, I, I feel like I'm supposed to say good luck, but I really don't wish you luck on it. I wish you consequence. So the plaintiff prevails. The defendant uh, admitted a number of arrests. This is a fascinating case. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you got to pay uh, $801 to the plaintiff for what you did. Um, what's your reaction to that? Are you, are you surprised at all? Well, as the judge said, she hopes you get your life in order. All right, uh, Ms. Sure. Miller, you're going to get money for four new tires. Good for you for filing the lawsuit. Thank you. I'm happy it went the way it went. Was it a hard decision for you to take him to court? No, it was very, it was a very easy decision. I knew he would be in the wrong, so. Okay, thank you very much and congratulations. Okay, that's it. What do you think about this, Harvey? So, Doug, sometimes you only get what you ask for. The plaintiff didn't ask for punitive damages. I think in a case like this, you could get it. You get punitives for fraud, oppression, or malice. And if slashing a tire isn't malice, I don't know what is. This is the plaintiff, Kevin Dawkins. He says he went on a date with the defendant and she jumped into his truck while he was having a cigarette and crashed it. She was intoxicated. She jumped the curb, ran over an expensive e-bike, causing it to fall, and his truck got damaged. He's suing and wants the $2,500 he still owed from her. This is the defendant, Ashley Carr. She says the plaintiff let her drive his truck when they were on a date, and they were both drinking. She admits she tapped an e-bike, which fell over, but doesn't remember any damage to the guy's truck, which was pretty banged up to begin with. Soon after she refused to pay him all this money, her car was set on fire, and she received threatening text messages, and she knows it was the plaintiff. Oh, him? No way. She's accused of having a bad first date. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that he went on a grand total of one date with the defendant and the drunken woman crashed his truck into a stop sign. But the defendant says the plaintiff let her drive his truck because he was drinking and she admits tapping a stop sign but causing no damage. It's the case of must have been a wall banger. I've been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome. Mr. Dawkins, you are suing Ms. Carr for $2,500, a cost to repair your 2011 Ford Explorer that you say she crashed. What happened? How do you two know each other? Um, we met on Facebook. Uh, she posted up something on Facebook stating that she wanted somebody to drive her to church. And um, I, you know, I offered. Okay. Um, then we started talking. And then from there, we went on a date. And then she crashed my truck. Tell me about After the dates. The you went drinking? No, I don't drink. Uh, I smoke weed. Where did you guys go on your date? We was originally supposed to go to the steakhouse, um, and the steakhouse was closing, so we went to the mall house, which is like two blocks away. Okay. I parked the car right across the street from the steakhouse with a bike, um, where she ran over the bike. Okay. And did you eat first and have your night, your date, and then when does the accident happen? So basically, uh, after we ate, we came back. Um, I said, I'm going to smoke a cigarette. She was like, ew, you nasty. You should smoke your weed. I'm like, nah, I'm not smoking my weed right now. So she said, all right, whatever, whatever. Smoke your stinky ass cigarette. So I stood outside, uh, out of the car, stood to the side, started smoking my cigarette. She jumped from the passenger seat to the driver's seat and put it in drive. She pulls off, hits the curb. The right side of the uh, vehicle was on the curb. 
she rolls over the um, the e-bike first and then hits the stop sign. Oh, jeez. All right. What happened, Miss Carr? First of all, we're on live TV and you're lying. I have the messages and I have the proof. You say that was the first mm-hmm. date. That wasn't the first date. OK, second of all, you was drinking with me, you know, very much well, you was drinking with me and consider I, I admit my part. I know I was drinking. I know I was intoxicated. I know I asked you to drive the car, but you were so busy trying to get into my pants again that you said yes and handed me the key. You understand? I, there's no way I would have been able to do that that fast and drive off. And the accident didn't even happen on the same block. You understand? So Where now you're just the, No, I'd like to didn't understand. Even happen on so the same wait, block. what's your defense? So did and you, you get in, in the, the car, car with me? You get in the car and what happens? He was in the car with me. When the accident happened, we both hopped out the car. Then you told me, oh, get back in the car because you're drunk. Get back in the car. Then you talk about, I told you something about some stink cigarette. Like, that's how you know you're lying and you're just going along making up stuff. Like, come on. Did you have an accident or didn't you? <laughs> I did have the accident. Tell me about the accident. the accident. Tell me about the accident. Okay, and I drove off. I hit the bike. And we both hopped out the car to see what happened. You understand? And right then and there, he told the guy, he's begging him, please don't call, please don't call the insurance, please don't call the insurance. You understand? And right then and there, I paid him $800. I sent him $800 through Cash App right then and there. You sent who $800? Kevin. Kevin. Okay. I sent Kevin the $800. And I'm guessing he was telling the guy that he was going to give the guy the money so the guy doesn't call his insurance. So he tried to go around the insurance. It was an accident. And when you have insurance, you did report you, the insurance. Did you hit the stop sign, too? I don't remember hitting the stop sign. I remember the bike, but I don't remember the stop sign. How did it, what did it feel like? Like I hit, said, I was drunk. Did you run over the whole bike? No, I tapped the bike. I tapped the bike. I didn't run over the man's whole bike. So you forward $800, which you acknowledge, Mr. Dawkins, right? That she sent you $800. Yes. And you she sent, sent that me $800, $800 directly. And then you sent that 800 to the bike owner. And then uh, what did you settle with with the bike owner? That $800? No. um, So after I run over to the car, um, the guy came out of the same steakhouse that we were supposed to go inside of. And he ended up working there. And he said, yo, what the f***? Excuse my language. I'm like, listen, man, I just started my insurance. Here's my insurance. I'm going to tell my insurance that I literally came out. I, I was going to start taking fault for it because I'm the only one on insurance. I didn't give her permission to drive my vehicle. And then there's going to be a whole big situation. And on top of that, my insurance would drop me because I didn't report it properly. So instead of me trying to go through all of that riffraff, because if you first start insurance, you have to have it for at least 90 days so they don't drop you from coverage. I said to the guy, I said, look, I'm going to tell my insurance that your bike was here and that I rolled over it coming out of the parking spot. I'm going to commit insurance fraud and go on. (laughs) Anyway, go on. I'm sorry. So (laughs) the guy, the guy said, the guy said, okay. Um, He said, you're going to call your insurance. I said, yes, I'm going to call my insurance. I just need your first and last name, your information, your phone number, something, give me something so I can have the insurance contact you. I gave him a physical copy of my insurance. Okay. And he gave, he took it. Um, then while, um, while we was on our way back, I'm just like, I'm just still distraught. Cause I'm like, why would you drive my car? I told you not to t- jump in the driver's seat, stay in the passenger seat. You're drunk. You don't listen. So she's still going back and forth. It's okay. I'm an EMT. I can pay for it. Don't know. Da, 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 da. So I say, you could pay for it. You are going to pay for it. Hold on a second. The guy gave me his number before we left. I called the guy while I was on the highway and I asked the guy, I said, how much do you want for the bike? He said $1,000. That's how much the bike costs. It costs me $1,000, and I'm going to be out of work for at least a week. So I said, okay, is it okay if I send you $800? Then we settled between each other of me and him talking through text message um, that he wanted $200 in weed because he, you know, he, he Why the is everyone always telling me they're, they're about their weed sales? They must feel they have to be honest. What, they like, can't what help is themselves. it about my face? All right, so you settle with the guy for essentially $1,000, uh, although 200 of it was in weed. And, uh, okay, so she gave you 800 right? Yes. And then today you, you are suing her for the damages to your car that resulted from this accident. Yes, which is completely separate, which is a completely separate charge. She and had you ever talked to her to about her paying this back to you? Had you ever told her? Yes. Listen, yeah. And what had she been saying about it? 
she said that she would to give her two weeks she had to pay her car note she had to pay her insurance and her rent and she has to put on um, food in her house i said okay i don't have a problem with that i know that you have a son so i'm not gonna gouge you for money or whatever i said just ask you just keep me informed keep where's me informed. where am i informed. seeing the damage to the car on the two rims on the right side you see the uh, the, the, the dented rims that's the uh, with the white mark off the black and then if you go to the front of the car the whole hood is dented when was this accident it's on September, September 26th because it's on the, the um, day that I had sent the money out. Can you bring my dad some beer when you come? Please, I'll give you the money back. Okay, what does he drink? So after the accident, October 2nd, you're still going out. Mm-hmm. Still trying to stay in contact because with her, asking her what's going on. Then when I told him that I... Oh, good God above. Just can you guys tell me so I can stop seeing your naked bodies? What's your defense to having to pay for the car, Ms. Carr? I do know that I crashed the car, like I said, so I was had no problem paying him. But then you're basically trying to make me pay for damages that was already on your car. You're saying I crushed this man's bike. If I crushed this man's bike, you would have much more damage on your car if I smashed the pole and crushed the bike. All right, Ms. Carr, based on what I'm hearing, um, oh, oh, and let me see, do you have the actual estimate from the auto body shop? Yes, I sent that in as well. It was 5,000 and some change. So why are you suing for 2500 Because um, I'm being mindful that she still has a kid. She still has bills. Her father lives with her. Um, and and her because this is a bloated her. estimate? It's not bloated. I'm not sure about bloated, but this is what they told me I needed to, to, to get fixed. All right. This is what I was told to get fixed. All right, Ms. Carr, I am ruling in favor of the plaintiff. You crashed his car. You got to pay for it. I find, based on looking at it, that the damages are about $2,000 should cover it. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails. He's going to get $2,000, not the $2,500 that he was seeking, but that should really help a lot. Uh, Mr. Dawkins, how about that? That's better than nothing. You still having a relationship with this with this lady, or is it all over? No, no, ma'am. No, sir. All right. Well, thank you very much. Good luck to you. $2,000. Thank you. You have a blessed day and stay safe. Hey, thanks. Good advice. Appreciate that. All right, Harvey, what's your thoughts? So, Doug, let's just talk for a second about settlement agreements. If you have a settlement agreement over a dispute and it is fully executed where you either get the money or pay the money, uh, you don't have a second bite of the apple. You can't go back into court. In this case, the settlement, the second settlement, was never executed, and that's why this case ended up being litigated. I live in Florida, so I know there's a two-party requirement for recording someone. But what if it's a business like a mechanic shop that has a Facebook page and I use my Facebook Live video or a friend just happens to be there and records it on Facebook? <laughs> can I get in trouble? Yes, of course you can. In fact, right. in Florida, is one of the, uh, Florida happens to be one of the states where it's a third-degree felony right. to tape somebody without their so knowledge. they're not playing. They're not playing. Third-degree felony. Not only will you not be able to use it against them, but you could actually go to jail for a felony.